Welcome back to the PT Graduate Podcast. I'm quite excited because we are starting season three. I'm even more excited because I'm talking to Jen Dugard today, and I've been looking forward to doing this for some time. Hi, Jen. Hey, Richard. How are you? I'm very well. I'm very well. I'm enjoying the summer. It's uh, it's it's a nice time of year to be uh, opening all the windows or putting the air conditioning on, depending on how humid your your spot is. Absolutely. Yeah, I close the doors. <laughs> Yeah, we're pouring at the moment. Like Auckland is seriously uh, is cooking, which I can't complain about. It's it's great to 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 be at this stage of the year. Um, yeah. So Jen, you've got a a, a long history in the industry, a PT business owner, author, presenter, number of ambassadorial roles, um, and there's one that I'm curious about, and I need to know more about, and that's a dent coach, because <laughs> I don't know what a dent coach uh, is. So yeah, right. among all those things I just rattled off. <laughs> Feel free to tell us a little bit about sort of you know how it started, how you got into the industry, what it is you do now, and obviously we'll go, go into a bit of detail. But um, yeah, it'd be nice to know sort of a little bit of the backstory and what a dent coach is. <laughs> yeah, okay. I'll start with the dent coach so that we okay. don't leave people just going, what on uh, okay. earth or I don't forget. So <laughs> um, it actually ties in really well with my story. Um, okay. I started in the fitness industry in about 2006, I think it was. And I started in a big box gym. So I was a fitness first PT back in the day. Mm -hmm. um, and then I had my son in 2008 and always knew when I got into the industry that I wanted to run a business and to build a brand um, rather than staying in that, like, you know, PT kind of mm -hmm. box, mm -hmm. yeah. um, which there's also nothing wrong with. You just got to figure out what you want. Yep. So I had a baby in 2008 and I decided to specialize in working with mums. Now, along that journey or very quickly after that, I came across a program called Key Person of Influence. Um, and Key Person of Influence is all about helping you to become known as the go-to person um, for what you do in your area. Now, Key Person of Influence have they rebranded or created a parent company. That parent company is called Dent. And now I do some business coaching for Dent. So they came into my world in 2008. And about two years ago, I started doing business coaching for them, which is really exciting for me because I spend most of my time either supporting people in pre and postnatal or um, business coaching, fitness businesses that work with mums. But when I go into the Dent space or the, the KPI, Key Person of Influence space, I get exposed to lots and lots of different types of businesses. But you know, I can still use those same concepts and things. So that's what a dent coach okay. is. I should Fantastic. say coach for dent or yeah. something. You've made me reflect on that, although it's a good that's conversation right. to start with. <laughs> but, you know, I, I thought, well, maybe, you, maybe you've done some panel beating as well. As yeah, as well. <laughs> it could be anything. Could yeah, be exactly. Anywhere. Yeah, thank yeah. you. Thank you for clearing that up. I appreciate it. No that. worries. Yeah, so I um I launched my business Body Beyond Baby in 2008 when when Marley was born and yep. I actually spent 10 years in Centennial Park in Sydney and we grew to become the biggest um pre and postnatal or mum focused fitness business in the eastern suburbs. Mm. Along that journey, I think it was in 2016, I created my pre and postnatal course Safe Return to Exercise and that was born of the desire to help more mums. And at that point I went, well, if I can help more trainers that can reach more mums, um, that would work. I was also playing with the idea back then of licensing or franchising Body mm. Beyond Baby, which I ultimately chose not to do. Um, mm. And eventually the desire to work with more fitness businesses has resulted in, you know, what is now Mum Safe. Um, yeah. So Mum Safe yeah. is a community of exercise professionals that are qualified in working with mums and they also have to hit four other criteria and it's a two-sided business in that I work with with the trainers help them to become certified um, provide them with ongoing education and working with women and mums and also business support if they choose that we also have mumsafe.com.au where mm. mums can go on there and type in their location and connect with a trainer that they know that they can trust in their area Yes. Clever. So that's kind of the fast version yeah, to today. Yeah, yeah. Gotcha. Gotcha. Um, so Mum Safe is kind of the 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 main program. That's something you've trademarked by the looks of things. That's that's your own brand, that's your own IP. And you talked yeah. a moment ago about looking at either franchising or licensing. And I see that 
well, obviously you just said that that's not the path you went down with, but you use this phrase um, affiliate. So there is some kind of business relationship going on there. How, do, what does that look like? Yeah. So I guess there's, I guess there's two, two answers to that. There's, or there's the conversation around why we chose not to license and franchise and then okay. what, what the relationship looks like yeah. now. Yeah. So I was really set on opening Body Beyond Babies like all across Australia for a, for a, for a period of time. And I paid, you know, the person that comes in and divides up the country to figure out yeah. territories and, and all this kind yeah. of thing. Mm. Um, I ultimately got to this position where I wanted – I wanted to work with trainers that wanted to grow their own thing, um, but I wanted them to continue to have their own voice. So when you create a license or a franchise, people get told how to do something, yeah. um, which I think is fantastic. And you look at McDonald's and there's plenty of franchises around yeah. there and there's people that want to own franchises for that reason. Mm. But I come back to what my ultimate mission is now, which is safe and effective exercise for all mums. Mm. Um, and I knew in my, I guess, in my soul or whatever it is that mm. if I made people be a franchisee or a licensee, we would not be able to reach all the mums that wanted to train at CrossFit or at Pilates or at, I don't know, doing any other kind of kind of sure. thing. So that's where creating safe return to exercise, the certification, and then ultimately becoming a mum safe trainer um, and the business model around that is our mum safe trainers um, they pay a membership fee yeah. um, that enables them to use the mum safe brand so they can call themselves mum safe trainers um, yeah. along with hitting the the five criteria of um, having done a pre and postnatal certification being registered with a fitness body so it could be exercise mm -hmm. New Zealand could be yeah. Oz active um, yeah. they have to be committed to their ongoing education, which we actually provide for them inside of MumSafe. Okay. Um, and they get their annual CDCs or PDPs through us, through part of that membership. Right. They have to be partnered with a pelvic health physio and they have to hold the correct insurance for the work that they're doing. So okay. it really is, it is it's a membership model mm. now. Mm. And they're licensed to use the brand for the duration of their membership. Got you, yeah. got you. And is that something they just have to renew on an annual basis? Um, they can, so they do a first year with us and then it's a month by month. So, okay. yeah. Okay, yeah. cool. Yeah. And I see you've got a number of, uh, it, this isn't just uh, limited to Australia now, you've got a number of different affiliates around the world. So interesting locations. So I, I see the UK, obviously Australia started UK and then a number of other interesting, remind me where where they are. There's, there's about three or four other, Singapore, yeah, so we've actually we've got one trainer in Singapore. Yeah, um, yeah. we've got one in Scotland now, which okay. is very exciting. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. and then we've got Australia, and New Zealand. So I I do yeah. I present Safe Return to Exercise the course in Taiwan and um yeah Taiwan, Singapore, Australia, New Zealand. Yeah. Um, but yeah, that's where the the actual trainers are. I think I need to I need to work on the domain name is is a step forward for me moving forward because of it's dot com dot au. Um, so of course, yeah. ideally it would be New Zealand or .com. I couldn't get the .com, but probably shouldn't say yeah. that out loud because someone will try yeah. and sell it to me for like yeah, thousands of dollars. Right. <laughs> Silly money. Yeah, you always think, yeah. Like, oh, I wish I could have got that before them because I knew they they would have needed yeah. it. Um, yeah. Yeah, that's a tricky one, isn't it? I suppose it's um, that's something you can can evolve over time, isn't it? But yeah. so how do you uh, how do you attract those people? I mean, somebody in Scotland, um, somebody in Dunedin, let's say, and and somebody in Singapore. How do they find you? Yeah, so I'm thinking to the specific people. I guess the Exercise New Zealand conference, um, which I was at last year, that where we had a chat, um, is definitely somewhere that I've met a bunch of New Zealand trainers. Um, yeah. We did used to run our Safe Return to Exercise course in New Zealand as well. So pre-COVID, we'd go over there, um, yeah. over to you, and and teach it. Mm. Um, and then I th Singapore was through running my course in Singapore, and then the. English trainer, I think, was off the back. I actually did a podcast with James Smith. I don't know if you know of James Smith. Uh, no. He's like a controversial English. Some people will know him, and uh -huh. if they know him, they'll be like, yep, yeah, I know exactly who he is. Um, so he does. He's got quite a big Instagram following and has a podcast. So I have gathered a few people from the UK off the back of 
doing that podcast. Yes. Um, but a lot of people come in through, I might do a masterclass and somebody will learn about what we're doing at mum safe. And then they'll, you know, come into the ecosystem, get a free download. Like there's a bunch of free gifts and stuff on my website. Um, yeah. So people come in in lots and lots of different ways. Um, and then we go through an application process to become a mum safe trainer. Yeah. 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 Excellent. Yeah. I think I do know him when you said controversial, that kind of, uh, <laughs> that triggered a memory of he'll, he'll do some, um, some sort of fairly polarizing posts, won't he? Absolutely. Uh, yeah. 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 Smart. Smart. Yeah. So how did you, how did you contact, how did you get in touch with him and manage to get onto that, that podcast? Yeah. So he actually did a call out and said, who was ah. the premium postnatal person I need to talk to oh, okay. um, and a bunch of people that know of me messaged him um, uh, so he reached out to me which is a little bit surreal I guess but yeah, yeah it's good yeah yeah yeah, yeah nice one yeah um so going back to what you talked about back in the the gym and mm. wanting to create a brand where did that desire come from have, have you is there something in your background that sort of created that desire to to want to be more than just the trainer on the floor sort of thing yeah, I um I was a kid that grew up on all my dad's business business books in the car. Okay. Um I like I would listen to your Jim Rowan, your John D. Martini, like all the old school kind of people. Mm. Um and I'd learned about specialization. I'm trying to think where I'd learned about it, but I guess it was, you know, I was one of those people, one of those kids that I was really disengaged in school in the last two years. Um, I would take days off school to go to work. Like I discovered I could earn money at a part-time yeah. job. I worked in the music shop and if they offered me a shift, I'd be like, yep, sure, I'll be there. So I was very <laughs> motivated to, I guess, create my own income. And right. then my dad owned a couple of businesses and, yeah, like I, I just... I knew, I'm not sure when I started to learn, but I, I learned early on that to become good at what, or to become, becoming known for what you, you do is always going to make your business journey easier. And when I went in to be a PT, I didn't know what I wanted to specialize in then, but I was definitely like, okay, how do I turn this into something that is bigger than only running sessions on the floor. And I say, every time I say that, I hate the word just, and I hate the word only because yep. I never want anyone to listen and go, what's wrong with, mm. there's absolutely nothing with choosing mm. the path that you want to be on. And I know plenty of amazing personal trainers that have been on the gym floor for the past 15, 20 years, and that's where they want to be. So mm. yeah, I never want to disrespect anyone by saying those words, just and only. <laughs> no, 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 it certainly doesn't devalue it. You're right. It's, there's, there's something for everyone and it was that was your path. Um, it's just mm. interesting to, I guess, understand the genesis of that. And and and, and often it's, you know, it's early early childhood or, or sort of mid to late yeah. childhood because it's before you start working. But then when you get into work, there's something that drives you in a certain direction. And um, it's interesting to to find out where that's come from. So, yeah, thank you. Yeah. Um, just a little side, just a little side. <laughs> what are you going to throw just, at me? Just, just going straight off track. On your left arm, there's a tattoo. Left arm. This one on both, but yeah, that that oh, one. Okay. Yeah, one. Can you share? I I couldn't read it. I saw a photo of it. Yeah, it's actually not in English, so you'd have a hard time reading ah, it anyway. But it's, okay. um, what it says in England is "What is up to us, not as what is up to us, what is not up to us," and it's the quote that actually came before the Serenity Prayer. And okay. what that means to me is what what is up to us is is our reactions to the things that are happening around us. What is not up to us are the things that are happening around us. Um, and I even had to draw on that this morning when we're going back into the first day of school. And I <laughs> cannot control what my daughter's doing, but I can yep. absolutely control what I am doing in in the middle of all that. So oh, yeah, I like it. Yeah. I like it. Oh, now <laughs> we're talking about now we're talking about tats. Yeah, you're gonna have to tell me what's on the other arm. <laughs> Um, I've got a, a that says "Be You Now," uh -huh. cool. and that's cool. part of a um, a longer piece of writing I wrote quite a few years ago. And okay. then this one is a it's like a symbol of femininity, oh, um, and I guess that's going through a phase of understanding that I'm operating all the time from my mas masculine and needing to or wanting to not needing to step into being okay with being a little bit more softer and a little bit more. Nice. Um, yes. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. I like that. Yeah. That's interesting. Um, <laughs> yeah, I suppose that business side of things is is typically a very masculine way of being and thinking, isn't it? So 
Uh, yeah. Having a reminder etched on your arm is a great way of finding yeah. out. <laughs> That's good. Um, so, so who's influenced you, or or who has? Well, mm-hmm. that's that's two questions really. Who's influenced you over the years? You talked about Jim Rohn and um, Di Martini, but also who supported you and who sort of had your back? And how's how have you um, been able to to enjoy this success? Because you know it doesn't doesn't just happen as a, a yeah. on your own, does it? There's always um, you know supporters or coaches or mentors and, and all those other things. Yeah, great question. Really great question. So I would definitely say um, the founders of Key Person of Influence or Dent, so Glenn Carlson and Daniel Priestley. Mm. Um, I'm still in contact with both of them and they were a huge part of me knowing what I wanted to do, but then them giving, offering the how and putting structure around how to get done what I wanted to do. Yeah. Um, I've been really lucky over the years. I've done a couple of business programs and I've managed to be the first cohort. So I was the first Sydney cohort of Dent. So it meant what it meant is I got that close proximity to Mm. them as humans before Mm. they grew the program. And it's, you know, everyone's got a scale, but it's a lot, it's a different energy. Um, I'm currently working alongside Tina Tower. So Tina is, um, quite big in the membership space. So I've learned a lot of the things that I've implemented inside of the MumSafe membership from her. Yeah. And again, I was one of the the earlier adopters, so to speak, into her program. Yeah. Um, but outside of that, I would say, you know, I, I look at our whole MumSafe team and I could not do what I do without every single one of those humans who have chosen to align with, the mission of safe and effective exercise and come along for the journey. And I think back, we've still got, there was an original six members and I think four of them are still with us from when we started as the body beyond baby affiliate team. And now we are mum safe. Um, and having people choose to be in your community and back you along the way, it's like that, that kind of support is, mm. it's like nothing else. You know, mm-hmm. and, and it comes with a big responsibility on my part. But, you know, some of those people are really great friends now. Um, and I continue to learn from them all the time. And I'm so open to to feedback as well. So, oh, yeah. yeah. And then there's all the books on my bookshelf. That... <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, are those colour-coded color by any chance? They are, but it's only like the last year thing. I was like, I need to do that. It looks so cool. But I don't did have you, enough colored books did, to make them. you see them... that on Pinterest? I don't do Pinterest. It's too oh, okay. confusing. Um, <laughs> I've seen it in the back of a few people's like videos and I'm like, I need a cool background. So I've it is a cool background. My, my things that cool I like. <laughs> it just reminds me of the, the one I saw. The reason I say that, because I saw one on Pinterest where there was this parking guy and he, and he rearranged the entire car park into like a rainbow. Oh my God. <laughs> that's dedication. I mean, yeah, people, right. people do it with books. That's pretty straightforward, but doing it with cars yeah. and a car park is next level. I thought, oh, I like it. A little bit of OCD. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. <laughs> Fantastic. Um, there is a, a whole bunch of um, other stuff that we could talk about. And I, I, you know, when I've gone through your, um, your bio and lots of information that you've sent over, which is very kind of you. Um, there's a lot of, uh, you talked about the brand, you talked about um, being known for what you do, helping your business along the way. And it looks like you, that's something you put an enormous amount of effort into. Um, and, and the reason I say that, just looking at the image in front of me, there's there's all the different featured on, in or at um, mm-hmm. media organizations that um, that you've you've had something to do with over the years. And it's taking up like a quarter of the page. It's a, it's an enormous, um, I guess, compliment to, to, to the work that you've done. So if someone was looking to leverage, you know, the media that's out there, because they're always looking for a story, right. And, and how um, they can, I guess, provide value to the media so that the media go, yes, we'll run that story. Well, what would your tips be for, for that? Cause it's, it's clearly made a difference for you. Yeah. I would say that what you're looking at is 15 years of, layers and the biggest tip I would say to somebody is it's never too soon to start because you might not know what getting into the media will do for you over time but if you don't start till you think that you're that you need it then you've lost all of this time so you might get one story a year for the first five years of business and then you'll become more known for what you do and it'll roll so um way back when so 
right at the beginning of Body Beyond Baby, it was probably like 2000, maybe not 2008, it was probably about 2010, 2011. Um, I started buying all of the mums and baby magazines, all of the fitness magazines, and I would, you know, find out who the editor was and I'd get in contact and and I'd, I'd kind of, you know, pitch to them. And, and sometimes I'd get a yes and, and often I would get a no. Mm. Um, and today it's, you know, go on to go and look at all the websites that um, align with what you do and, and, and how you do it. And, you know, even Instagram, like you could follow journalists, you can mm. create relationships with people online, like comment on something that they're posting. Um, and, and also I would say be open to things that don't immediately promote you. So I would build relationships with journalists in the mum space and in the fitness space. And there's a resource called Source Bottle, which is a, a, okay. something that you could use. So it's sourcebottle.com. Mm. Okay. And you can go in there and you can put in in there, you know, what you specialize in, what what you could be an expert contributor on. Um, and I would answer hundreds and hundreds of those. And it might be, you know, we want something from a mum who's got this age children. And it's got nothing to do with fitness. But if I could then create a relationship with that journalist, then mm. the next time that they needed something then they would hopefully circle back to me um so i I guess the biggest advice is go over and above on i was talking to someone the other day and she was telling me that she she wants to work with corporates and she sends out 10 emails a week to corporates and that's not because she's not going to get she might not even get one back but 10 over a year is 500 and no, I can't do the maths on that. So I'm not even going to try. 52 times 10, 520. Yeah, 520, yeah. Right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. 520 emails she sent out mm. to, and if you got a hit on 5% of that or 10% of that, then you'd have the things that you want. Sure. So, yeah, yeah. um, you know, people will talk about aligning with like sending pictures and, and doing all that kind of thing, which is something that we we provide press releases and things like that inside of MumSafe for certain topics okay. for our trainers. Yeah. Um, so you can go down the press release route or you can go down there, hey, this is what I'm doing. I'm really passionate about this. We're, you know, we're helping all these mums in our local community. Um, journalists love real stories. So mm-hmm. I'd say the biggest thing is creating relationships and sure. not being afraid to just not get a response and just going again and again and again. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Persistence. Yeah. And start before you're ready. It's the same as everything. It's the old when, when's the best plant, time to plant a tree scenario, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. And here I am wanting to plant a mango tree. I should have done that. Uh, <laughs> yeah, nice. <laughs> <laughs> that's that's a really that's really useful advice. I like that. Thanks. Thanks, Jen. And uh, let's roll into some other advice as we're in that that space. You know, what sort of things have uh helped you, been successful for you that you think uh trainers that may be looking for a few tips, a few things to go their way. Could yeah, do. and I suppose it's it's mostly th- there's work required, isn't there? It's not there's no accidental stuff. No, and it, it is that phrase, isn't it? Like the overnight success took the last kind of ten mm. years. Mm. Um, so there's a couple of things that come to mind when you ask that question. Number one is understand your finances. Yeah, and yes. yeah, I think a lot of trainers are operating in the dark. Um, and they don't know that they're in trouble before until it's too late, until they've got like a huge tax debt that's been hit with, they've been hit with, or Mm. they do their numbers at the end of the year and realize that they've been working for like 200 bucks a week. And and when does it change? Um, I don't know if you've heard this, my story that I, I ran body beyond baby. And and when I was looking to, to grow the business, I opened a couple of different locations in Sydney. And yeah. I was like, this mindset of let's work on the business, not in the business. So I brought contractors in and I had, mm. you know, people doing different things. And from the outside, all these people were saying to me, oh my goodness, you've got these locations, you've got these trainers and it looks really amazing. Mm. And then, so I, oh, I was turning over about $200,000 for the year. But right. when I did my personal tax return, my take home income was $14,000. And I did that not only once, but I did it two years in a row. And I was like, yeah, I won't do that again next year. And I did it again. And it wasn't until the end of that second year that I was like, okay, I need a spreadsheet. I need a, a forecasting. I need profit and loss. I need to scale back what I'm doing. And I do this with a lot of trainers is say, stop running all the sessions, mm-hmm. um, scale it down and 
and earn the maximum capacity that you or the maximum you can for the least physical work that you can. And mm-hmm. then before you scale that, do the numbers. Do you want to bring on a, a a contractor which seems like the next best option, but really when you do the numbers, you're only earning an extra 20 bucks a session because the contractor is taking it. Or yeah. is it time to look at different ways to scale the business in terms of um, products or services that don't exchange time for money in the same possible way? So yes. know your numbers. <laughs> yes. it's interesting I, you you talked about that at conference didn't you this time I did and, and I saw that you were up doing that and I thought geez that's similar because a couple of years before that I'd done the same thing it's about you know knowing your numbers yeah so cool. and it's it's you know everyone's passionate about the 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 exercise side of it and working with people but you know it's not a business until you've got the numbers nailed yeah absolutely mm. cool. I was very I like lucky that. I had someone who was good at business sat down and and gave me his spreadsheet um, and took me through through exactly what I needed to do. And that was one of the, aside from deciding that I didn't want to license or franchise for the the reason around people doing what they were, they wanted to do was mm-hmm. also doing the numbers. So I worked out that I had to have 50 licensees to earn half a million dollars because right. I'd done the forecasting. And I decided that I didn't want to manage 50 people for half a million dollars. Yeah. Like half yeah. a million dollars sounds like a lot of money, but $50 yeah. million dollars sounds like a big ass headache to me. <laughs> Yeah, it's a lot of work, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. It's yeah. a big machine. Cool. So finances are the. I think you're right, and I think that does need to sit at the top of the list. But um, what else you got? I think it it kind of comes back to the profile piece that we were talking about before, and the layering effect to become known for what you choose to do, yeah. um, and always thinking ahead. So. You know, had I not grown my profile in the space of working with mums, it would have been very hard to then move into coaching trainers and then move into, you know, running something like Mum Safe. Um, But I talk to my trainers all the time about, you know, you don't have to do everything all at once. Do the layers. So your first layer might be, I don't know, getting some flyers printed and giving them to, you know, I don't necessarily believe in letterbox dropping, but I do believe in giving flyers to, you know, if you're Mm -hmm. working with mums, it's very easy to see a mum on the street and go and give a flyer to her. Mm -hmm. And then you might go, okay, I've nailed that. I've I've got the budget to do that. I'm out in my community. This month, I'm going to make an effort to go and talk at at a play group or at a mums group or do something like that and get one of those booked in every month ahead. And then once you've got that layer booked in, you might go, okay, now I'm going to get my car branded because if my car is branded they're going to see my flyer they might hear me talk and then they're going to see my car driving yeah. around somewhere yes. so think about those different layers that help you to become known in your local community and build your profile um based on that and it's it's i'm not going to say it's easy because it's a lot of work but if you if someone is a local business owner it's a lot easier to become known in your local space than it is when you start to go I want to, you know, run an online program or do things like that. Having said that, if you're building your profile online by, you know, writing articles, you're building your Google. So if someone types your name and they see you on Google, then when you are ready to go beyond the local bit, you're then one step ahead or three steps ahead because you've got a a profile online. Um, And when people are looking for you, they go, oh, wow, like you've done all this stuff. And it's like, well, you know, maybe I did. It took me a long time, but I've... Mm started to build those layers before I actually need them. Fantastic. I like that. Yeah. yeah. Profiling, layering, and thinking ahead. Fantastic. I'm scribbling. You may have noticed <laughs> while you talk, <laughs> just so that I can add these into the show notes and I'll, I'll, I'll put your, your websites and various other bits in there as well, mm-hmm. just so people can, they can do their own homework as well. Nice. Nice. Um, any other top tips, any other sort of um, gems that, would be a shame to to not share I think um one of the biggest questions I get a lot is how do I do all the things that I I want to do so I think it's really important to understand what phase of life that you're in so if somebody is a parent or if somebody is a mum um know that you probably don't have as much time as you might want to dedicate to your business Um, but know the time that you have and then allocate it well. So we do something called a perfect week. So we'll get our trainers to start from Monday, you know, whatever time they get up on Monday to Sunday night. Yeah. Put in there what's going on right now. If it's not what you want it to be, what would you like it to be? And then maybe you've got an interim week that you need to move to before you get to that. And then within that, 
When yeah. are you most productive? When do you have the most time? Uh, we talk about something called big rocks and little rocks. So, yeah. you know, if yeah. you have projects that you want to get done and your most productive time is in the morning, turn off all your email or don't switch it on yet and concentrate on doing some of those big rocks because all the little rocks that will fill up the jar and fill up your space, like your emails and your social media and your, you know, all the rest of it, you never get anything done. So getting really good at knowing your time, when you're going to do certain things and yeah, prioritizing, I guess. Love it. Yeah. And then there's always room for coffee once the jar's full, right? Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> but it, is, it really is like, we've got trainers that, you know, they, they say to me, I've only got five hours a week and it's like, okay, cool. What could you do with those five hours a week? Because quite often people go, I've only got five hours a week, so I won't do anything, but it's the same as the layering effect. And it's the same as the media. It's like, you look back in a year's time and add all those five hours a week forward. And you might not be, you know, as far as someone that's got 25 hours a week, but you're way further ahead than, than you were at the start of the year. So yeah. 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 Have you read the slight edge by Jeff Olson? No. No. Basically, what you're talking about, <laughs> you don't need to. <laughs> <laughs> it's the same. It's the whole compounding effect, you know. Yeah. Which lots of people talk. James James Clear talks about it as well, doesn't he? So yeah. Atomic, it's um. Atomic, it's just, atomic habits. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. 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 But um, Jeff Jeff Olson came a few, I think, a couple of decades before. The thing that sticks in my mind was Jeff Olson talking about his mum, who, when she retired, she had two million dollars in the bank, and she had a very, you know um low paying job she she i can't remember what she did but what she'd done is she'd put away 20 dollars a week from i don't know whatever age you know um and it's just a, a beautiful example of how everybody could put themselves in a position where they're quite comfortable when they come to retire or whatever their plan is but not everybody does it yeah the value of compounding interest or compounding yeah. anything right yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And that and that can be applied to tasks and businesses and everything, can't it? It isn't just a financial thing. Um but I think it's a really useful thing to have in your program to be to teaching your your team. That's that's fantastic. Um well I've got three really juicy ones there, Jen. And and um <laughs> there is there's a little bit of room left on the paper if 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 you've Ooh. got any more, but um I you know. Don't don't feel like I'm putting you on the spot. If, if you're happy with those, then I'm happy with those. I've got one more. So I think I would say understand your life values. Yeah. Because yeah. plenty of people build businesses that put them in conflict with their whole life. And once you, you know, we drill it down to our two whole life values and every single thing you're thinking about doing within your business, you run through your values and every life area. So, for example, let's say I got an opportunity to go and work in another country for six weeks. That's an amazing opportunity and it could be really align with what I want to do. But when I, if I go there, okay, so then what is the impact on my business? It's awesome. But what is the impact on my children? Well, mm. six weeks away from my kids, that's a big impact on them. My two values are courage and connection. Um, you know, what is the impact on my relationship? And I might go, you know what? I need to connect with my kids. I need to be at home. So I'm going to have the courage to say no to that, that opportunity. On the flip side, I might go, well, if I can bring my kids over halfway through because maybe this pays a really good amount of money and then we can take a holiday at the end. It might be using my values in, in a different way. Um, and that for me has shaped a lot of, so I sold my business body beyond baby because it wasn't supporting my daughter's needs at school. So I had to be somewhere at a certain time. It wasn't the only reason, but it was one of the, the reasons yeah. um, she had to be at school. I had to be at the park. 15 minutes after I had to drop her off and drop-offs were really, really hard. So, you know, it was where do I see this going and, and how do I change things within my business in order to support my family and my whole life? So, you know, running through things through the filter of your whole life values, not your business values, um, but they should be the same anyway, in my opinion. Mm -hmm. um, but, yeah, I feel like values are huge. Yeah, fantastic. I think that's a really great place to finish. It's just a, a beautiful way of tying a, a little bow on top of everything you said. So thank you, Jen. Really, really appreciate your time. It's great chatting. And I think we'll probably have to have a version two in the distant in the not too distant future. <laughs> Thanks for having me. Appreciate it. Cool.